Who's up? Time to cook some wow! Log in. Give it up! I'm not making a TBC video. People will get pissed. Besides, I'm busy in what? Why? Why? Why do you have so many of these? Fine. Fine, you want it? I'll make a TBC video. I'll make a TBC video. The best expansion ever made in certain people's eyes. I'll talk about the bad times. I'll talk about the harsh things. You fucking better help me though. You better help me. You asked for this. even start the game was in a turmoil a wow expansion it had to be expected but so much change taking my comfy vanilla chair and blowing it all to hell the precursor to the burning crusade was an all out of war blizzard had just given every noob who could queue for a battleground high warlord weapons you couldn't step out of a city without one of these noobs charging you like some rabid chickmunk. And they were terrible, but they believed they were amazing because they had high warlord gear. Allow me to recreate exactly what this was like. Well, at least Blizzard would never do something like that again. Oh, come on. For years, all we had known was that our characters and our gear was growing and becoming more powerful. And now, that will all be thrown away by leveling gear. I've got to be honest, I wasn't looking forward to it. What would it be like to lose all this purple stuff? Our epic 40-man raids were being reduced to 25. We were going to have to say a tearful bye-bye to our friends like Billy Geddenbaum. And sure, going to miss that guy. The Horde are getting Paladins, the Alliance are getting Shaman, and what in God's name is an arena? And so with thunderous server crashes, the evening came. Across the world, queued up late at night with the nerds, waiting for that clock to strike and that copy of the game to be in hand. The place I went to actually had a crowd of people gathered listening to tales of one man as he regaled them with, and I shit you not, the details of how he attained full Night Slayer. <gasps> the pizza must flow. Leveling in TBC was a total fucking clusterfuck. The wise decision was made to allow both factions to run rampant in the same zones. We were going to take all the people from here and put them here. Oh, we got ourselves a gang fest, people. Mm. You ever wonder why the expansions after TBC had a choice of where you wanted to start leveling? It was because of this. Can you imagine nearly everyone in your realm who had managed to get level 60 fighting over the same quest mobs and items at once? People complained in Kata and Wrath, but to be honest, you're a pussy. TBC just clobbered everyone together in a giant pot and just left them there to be ganked. Not that I know, because TBC meant I could start from level 1 again. Instead of checking out all this brand new amazing content you've been hearing about for the last 6 months, you got to go to 
a couple of brand new zones and straight back to the barrens. The shit you had been doing for the last three goddamn years. While all your guildies were raving non-stop about the new stuff, the big gear they were getting from doing five-man dungeons, this was your life for the next foreseeable future. Again, Blizz learned from this though. In the future, DKs and Monks got speed leveling, but in TBC, it was the old school classic grind. No buffs, no speed ups for 58 levels before you could try out anything new. At least by that point, the tidal wave of ganking had actually settled down. Enough of the wine though. TBC introduced the most fantastic zones the game has ever seen. In my opinion, they are still superior to anything that has come since. I'd argue that only Ice Crown and a couple of Cata Zones could compete with what was to be our new home for the next 20 months. You would have to be a bit of a dick to hate on Alkandown, Shadowmoon, Negrand, Netherstorm and, well, Blades Edge to be fair, fucking sucks. But onwards, let's not get it wrong. Perhaps the biggest quality of life change TBC was to bring for now and forevermore was quest hubs. Now, quests you get here are to be done here. Quests you get there are to be done there. Great. What a simple idea. In vanilla, it was like, hi, I'm randomly stood in the middle of fucking nowhere with a quest. Why don't you go six zones over, come back, and then find me in a bush over here, and now I'm a different guy entirely. Not only that, but now each zone had more than enough XP to actually gain the level to move to the next zone. It sounds stupid if you play now, but in TBC, this was the first time it was actually true. In vanilla, you could easily finish all the content and not be able to travel onwards. Mindless grinding was no longer a thing. TBC didn't even skimp on the friggin' five-mans. Every level came with at least one new piece of five-man content. Sometimes three, Miss of Pandaria. They spread them out into a multitude of environments. One level, you were skull-fucking orcs in Hellfire. The next, you were in the steamy underwater hot tubs. And then over to the creepy Luigi's Mansion of Alkendown. And then to the futuristic powers and science of Netherstorm. It was physically impossible to get bored leveling up in TBC. Everyone assumed you would rage and be emo about losing all your hard-fought perps. But honestly, once you were in it, nobody gave a shit. Blizzard also made their first attempt at a dungeon finder. The LFG system. A major feature of the Burning Crusade. Hilariously, it was universally hated and was nothing like what you know of today. It was more similar to the pre-made groups of Warlords of Draenor. But, Wowpedia's article at the time described the LFG system like this. Real people do not like being matched with strangers. They want to see who is joining or who they are joining. I know, right? So we're capped. We've braved this new world and it's time to raid. Or arena. Honestly, the arena was an incredible addition to the game. All we had been used to was either long, drawn out random BGs or totally unfair pre-mades. PVPers have been crying out for solid, organized, rated competition. And the arena would quench that thirst. In the arena, it will be gladiator versus gladiator. Mano a mano. The only deciding factor in this true test of who is the best would be skill. Skill and gear. Skill, gear and your team. And skill and gear and your ability to get around pillars. It wasn't exactly balanced. Well, it still isn't. True. But that was even before Blizzard accepted that it was never going to be balanced. At the arena launch, there was a clear vision in mind. A utopic PvP community where players were going to be able to show off their skills. It just wasn't going to happen. What it actually was was a perfect symphony. A harmony of endless games hoping and praying someone would make a mistake to seize a win. TBC contained some of the most amazing comps to ever grace the game. It had wonderful things like Druid Warrior, Druid Rogue, Druid Hunter. You see the theme? It wasn't until the end of the expansion that comp cheesing really kicked in. Up until that point, we were still in fairy tale land where it could possibly work out. But eventually, by the end, the glimmer and the glitz wore off, and what it was finally came to be. But what it was was far better than what we had before. Let's talk about TBC PvE. A lot of people like to think they know what they were talking about. Maybe they say it was easy or it was too hard. But the truth of the matter is. Ugh. No, 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 no. no. What the hell was that? No, no, no. Andy? Andy? You okay? Are the kids alright? Andy? The hat's fine. The hat's fine. Oh. 
I'm gonna have to go out. You're filming, right? Yeah, I'm filming. I could die. It could be aliens. No, oh, I'll, I'll film it. Don't worry about it. Could be Jumanji. Fair enough. After you. Oh, dude, the garden. <laughs> What's wrong with the garden? Well, Look steady. This. What the hell's done this? I don't know. Oh. You ever seen anything like that before? Uh, what, like, well, like, a big bald spot in the middle of some foliage? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I bet something's buried in it, you know. Oh, in the spot? Mm-hmm. Help me dig it up. Yeah, yeah, let me just go and get a spade. This has been sent by the gods. This is the TBC attunement chart. You remember this thing? No, not one bit. You did all these things, man. Raid con- Come on, dude. Normal mode quest lines, get into Thralmar, go to the Shattered Halls, over to Alcatraz, get flying, move up to Serpent Shrine. Oh, no, no, no. You were in my guild in the Burning Crusade. You did all these things. Right, okay. Are you joking right now? No, absolutely not. Karazhan. You remember Karazhan? Yeah, yeah, I remember Had a Karazhan. door, needed a key, quest yeah. to get key. Did not do quest. How get did getting Karazhan? Friend open door. Are you telling me you went through the whole Burning Crusade without doing a single quest? Of course I am. When you're me, and you're not, by the way, people open doors for you, yeah? Open my own door, chump. Holy grub balls! Look at all this stuff! Not even Indiana Jones had to do this much in all the movies combined. I can't hold go here until I do this, but I can't do that until I do that. This is nuts! I'm not going to do all this crap. Maybe if I open it in paint and... Uh, oh, that feels good. This is great. I have stuff to do for months. This one circle alone will take a week and it's going to be months before I get there. But every time I log in, I have something productive to do. I should make one for every expansion. I'm going to do one for what? Okay, so requirements to enter Hellfire Citadel. Well, we have to hit level 100, then... Uh, well, maybe I'm being unfair. Let's add the other eights. Not that you need to do them at all, but... Well, Hellfire Citadel's there. Alright, I'm still a little short. Okay, Legendary Quest. Well, I guess, well, we don't really need to do that, but we probably will. Um, what else should I do to be a raider? No, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's just do this. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. Thirty nine ninety nine, baby! Cash up! Karazhan, possibly the greatest raid in history. In raiding, we have this thing called the stars aligning. We know the boss, we've practiced, and now we just need everything to line up, and then sweet, sweet kills will happen. It's absolute perfection. This is how Kara went for Blizzard. They had made tons of raiding content. They know how to make mechanics, but every raid had that broken leg, the weak link holding it back from excellence. Then the stars aligned, and it happened. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to bring you Karazhan. According to my map here, before we can raid, we gotta do us some five mans. I don't mean just for fun, we actually have to go do them for the key, which is fine, because TBC five mans were the shit. Unlike today, you couldn't go straight to heroics, not just because you didn't have the key, but in fact, because heroics were designed to take your character and mince it into guano bowls. TBC gave a nice selection of level 70 normal modes to gear up for heroics and get an idea of what the bosses were about. Oh, those level 90 normal modes, they were tough, weren't they? Let me make this clear. Heroics were a new feature. They were foreshadowed with warnings of great difficulty and that they were not designed for pugs. This was five-man content that was for raiders. It offered rewards for raiders such as the Karazhan key, such as the Tempest key. This wasn't a lie. How hard was hard? When one of your dungeon quests is a speed run that takes 50 minutes. When the fell guard trash needs to be enslaved instead of tanked because it will one-shot anything it touches. When even the most basic of mid-dungeon bosses feels like you're fighting in the depths of hell. 
Then you can get a grasp of how hard these were. 15 of these torturous skull-clad portals awaited you. Every rep completed, every heroic key gained, was the start of yet another adventure. And believe me, it was an adventure. It's sad to see people claim that they were easy, or think that time-walking dungeons are even close to what they were like. As with any launch content, as gear from other sources becomes more accessible, the experience of doing these dungeons midway or towards the end of the Burning Crusade is very different to those who did them at the relevant time. They were tough, brutal, and incredibly rewarding. Too rewarding, in fact. Once you got your key and headed off to Karazhan for the first time, you were, of course, blown away by the ridiculously creative bosses, the incredible voice acting. But... But, there was one minor issue. Originally, a lot of the items in Karazhan were worse than the Dungeon Blues. Not every item, but items like Quagmiran's Eye were best in slot until later Tier 5. Luckily, the loot was buffed in August and Caro would be raided every single week until the end of the expansion. Prince Malkazar's Infernals would troll millions and millions of... What the fuck is that? How many potions does he have? Despite the legacy, initial raiding in the Burning Crusade was disgusting. It was awful. Not only could you use elixirs and flasks at the same time, meaning each wipe would cost a raid thousands of gold or endless hours of herb farming, but most of the bosses and trash were completely broken or obscenely overpowered. Very few guilds in the world experienced it. But for those that did, oh boy. Gruul required invincibility pots for Shatter. Magtheridon's trash needed more coordination than most bosses. It could also respawn while you were fighting the big smurf. Serpent Shrine Cavern trash was so difficult that by the time you actually got to Hydros, it actually started to respawn. Morrigrim Tidewalker was completely broken, Solarium was impossible, and that brings us on to Lady Vash. Famously being killed by bugging out, allowing a Shadow Priest to Soulstone and kill her well after the wipe had occurred. Even after Method legitimately killed her, the fight was so bugged out they couldn't reach the boss for loot due to never-ending bat spawns. Should also quote here that the GM asked, How many times has this happened on the world first kill? It was pretty clear none of the raids were tested properly. But the fixes came, those bugs were eliminated, and what the majority got to experience was not only five superb raids but also two of the best bosses I've ever faced. I still consider Kel'thas Sunstrider to be the number one all-time award-winning encounter ever devised after phase one was fixed. Tier five, though, isn't why we bought this game. Kel'thas and Vash can all suck a dick. There's someone else whose head shall roll. The Black Temple had been in the game since patch 2.1, but we just couldn't get in. Remember our map? This was it. Before us, we had killed so many. We had fought battles, endless battles against the minions of the Nether. The Legion was on its ass. The entire expansion had built to the Black Temple. And here it was. Kael'thas, the best fight I can remember, dead. Lady Vash, my number two, dead. Keys, gone. And in we stepped. So what was the feeling of walking into the Black Temple and Mount Hajal? Crushing disappointment. I'm not joking, if anybody remembers doing this legitimately, as in pre-attunement where you'd fought through everything. You completed that attunement road, you'd done it for months, and finally you were there. You were met with Nagentus, two pulls, dead. Supremus, a guild that had killed Kael'thas, couldn't die to Supremus if they fucking tried. Shade of Akama, it wasn't up until Teron Garfin that a challenge came up, and that was because we had this three button fucking clicky mini game that for some reason, some people can't fucking do. You know who you are, you can't handle three buttons which are a Nova and fucking Icelands. 
I don't know why, but you couldn't do it. And then we got into the meat of it. And yes, the rest of Black Temple was pretty good. Until you realized that you needed shadow resistance. And then what happened is, oh, amazing. Farm raids at the fucking weekend to kill trash to get shitty fucking reagents in order to start crafting shadow resist armor. So bad. Illidan was an epic fight. One of the best memories I have. It was great. But even before that, we have another place to go. I'm sure most of you have visited it. Just know that when it was a weekly requirement that you couldn't blaze through, well, yeah. At least give Prop Pally something to brag about. It boggles the mind how this could have gone so wrong. Hijal was so hype. This is childhood memories we're talking about. One of the most lore heavy moments in WoW's history, fighting alongside the greatest names we know and this is what we got. You might think I'm being over the top, but remember Sunwell wasn't even a sperm in Blizzard's nuts yet. It was gonna be an age before there was anything else to do. And Hyjal had tier sets and important weapons to gain, so it couldn't be skipped. So every week, the guild had to set aside a few hours to literally kill trash over and over again. And heaven forbid that someone caused a wipe, meaning you could savor the whole process again. But eventually, the Sunwell did come. And with it, a whole host of changes that would alter the course of WoW forever. The Sunwell Isle had so many ideas thrown in it that it's only having experienced it. You can truly appreciate how diabolically lazy Tanan and the likes actually are. A brand new zone fitted with new five man, a wealth of dailies, good rewards, PvP, a new raid zone, epic gems, titles, new consumables. It might sound standard for today, but this was literally years ago. The gated progression of the Isle via server-wide effort was used again on the Thunder Isle recently. New five mans with a raid were to become the standard until Walla to drain or epic gems have become a staple still. And it truly was the beginning of giving fast catch-up gear rewards to non-raid players. Or welfare epics, if you've come to know them. It's why it's so strange that this premise hasn't really been developed since then, considering all these features were just one patch in the Burning Crusade. So it's into the Sunwell we eventually stepped. The Sunwell is remembered as some sort of pinnacle of raiding. Not for me. i done Sunwell. And if I'm being completely honest, only Kalek, Felmist, and Kill Jaden himself are what I would call decent bosses. Don't get me wrong though, they were incredibly difficult. But mechanically, Brutalis, the Eridars, Muru... They were a little more than average. You can see more detailed thoughts on Muru here. I was bored learning these bosses and farming them was worse. In comparison to the Black Temple, Sunshade of Akama, and even the actual bosses of Hajal, I just never could get excited about them. I'd say on average, Sunwell was very hard and very average. This was also the first time gating was introduced. It seems Blizz had some problem with people raiding hardcore, so decided to prevent that by simply locking off bosses after a couple of kills. But really, it was one of those things that people get mad about. Although it really had no effect on them at all, because most of them couldn't kill Brutalis. It did make the world first race less interesting, but that was about it. As this video comes to a close, I want to mention a few things in my final thought and conclusions about what is the legacy of the Burning Crusade. There are a few things you might think I skipped over, namely flying. However, flying was simply a solution to the bad waypoints in vanilla. We had a new profession in jewel crafting and dailies were introduced for the first time. But it also makes me kind of sad. If you look at Ogrelar, Skettis and the Netherwing, you'll see that those sub mini zones had far more content in them than Tanan Jungle has on its own, which is why many of us are angry and sad that if you experience those things, you know how much better things can be. PvP. I skimmed over PvP because generally we were still learning our feet. Arena was so new, we just didn't know what to do with it. And then by the end, we kind of started to figure it out. But TBC was also the beginnings of PvP outdoor areas. They had them over in various areas like Hellfire and into the Swamp Zone as well. And those would eventually be the core, the foundation that delivered us Wintergrasp and Tolbarad and Ashran. All those things began in TBC. The real legacy of TBC is Blizzard was unafraid. Vanilla was limited and it gave them so many ideas about where they could take the game. And TBC just threw everything 
everything at the game to see what would stick. Lots of things they got wrong. Did I enjoy farming endlessly for potions just so somebody could ninja pull and cause them all to disappear and reapply them? No, not at all. And forcing people as a raid leader and as a guild master to get people to a tune who would never do it, all that kind of stuff was a huge headache and eventually got changed, altered and improved. The TBC was my favourite ever expansion. It was amazing. I've listed some of the faults in this video, but overall, what an experience it was. Every step of the way, you had so much to do that rolling alts wasn't really a thing. Sure, you could cap them and maybe do some Karazhan runs, but every single time you were back on your main with so much extra things to get on with. And that's what we love about World of Warcraft. That's what we hate is disappearing from the game is that there's so much focus on fast ways of gearing up other characters instead of being allowed to love our mains and have all these optional extra things to do. Hell, we even had optional reputations all over the map that simply serve little extra than something to do, let alone reputations in Scryers and Aldos once you completed that ridiculously long walk in Shatrath. None of these things individually require an entire section of the video to themselves, but they're not things that I've missed or skipped over. Thank you for watching. Before I go, please like and share the video. It really just spreads it around. It helps me make more money. It helps me make more videos. And hopefully we can keep the ball rolling. Also, I've made a couple of other videos similar to this. They're in the playlist. So you can click a link behind me. Other than that, I want to leave you with this music video created by one of my editors. Who just wanted to put together something special that reminded him of the Burning Crusade. Enjoy. Thank you. We've come to end your reign, Illidan. My people and all of Outland shall be free. You are not prepared. I'll carve the meat from your bones.
Paradise. Run away, little girl. Run away. The Menagerie is for guests only. These are the hallmarks. These are the pillars. 